Hello True Believer! Today we're going to go through Criterion A in how to do your cable protector assignment. So the big focus with this is the different strands that you need to sort of focus on when you're writing it, and there's four of them. Um, if you're aiming for the highest grade, you'll be aiming for this side. So we'll quickly go through these just to begin with. Okay. Um, if you're wondering how to get improve your grades, just make sure you read these very carefully as to what you're doing, and make sure that you match them. Okay, so if we start... The first strand one is the student explains and justifies the need with multiple points for design and developing the cable protector for your company. So this is where you make up the situation or the story behind why you need to make this cable protector. Okay, the more interesting and more engaging you make that, the better the grade. So make sure that you're justifying it there. Okay. Strand two then, a research plan is created independently containing at least five questions to be answered using both primary and secondary sources questions are prioritized okay so this is where you need to make up some questions and you need to answer where they can, um, the data comes from strand three then is an analysis of at least four cable protectors of interest giving both pros and cons of each and strand four is develop a design brief of the cable protector to be built presenting the analysis of the research okay so the template that you should basically follow when you're building um, this assignment is investigate the design situation, focus on the problem that you need to um, resolve, find the solution that matches that, so it doesn't need to be exactly how you're going to do it, but it needs to be the big picture idea, some background information of why this needs to be done, and then a research plan listing research questions with priority levels and why they are important, research questions listing um, both primary and secondary sources of information that you've gathered, and then answers to the research question using the data that you've collected. Um, then an analysis of a group of similar products that inspired a solution to the problem. And then developing a design brief, which presents an analysis of relevant research. And finally, a bibliography with all the references that you've done. So some hints. When you're creating the situation, make a story that outlines talks to the target audience about the problems that need to be solved. Okay, so write in the first person, give it a sense of ownership. So here's a real simple example. I'm a CAD designer at a graphics company, insert company name here. My lead designer, Tim, has asked me as a new intern, a new graduate from uni, new employee, lead designer of a small team to design a cable protector because of the following reasons, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so talk about the problems that need to be solved. Um, was there a drop in sales? Was there a new campaign running? So Lego, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor Ragnarok whatever you sort of makes your interest. Uh, you might also want to do a new particular merging um, craze. So fidget spinners a couple of years ago was pretty popular, so you might want to match that. Okay, so that's the situation. So this is strand one. For strand two, then you're going to be looking at primary versus secondary um, research. So if we compare the two, primary is where you um, provide results specifically about your company or the issues. So this includes focus group surveys or interviews. Um, for our purposes, we'll probably only be able to do surveys. Then secondary research involves applying results of previous completely uh, completed studies to your situation. So these are free. So this is online research, usually, or reading through books or finding some other person's research that they've created. When you're doing it, um, your research question you might have is what makes a good cable protector? So you need to make create five of these. And then to answer that, you need to use both primary and secondary data. So the primary source of data with that, you might ask through survey questions. So out of these examples, which is your favorite cable protector? Um, and then briefly explain why. So that could be two survey questions that you could ask to answer that one research question. Okay. Secondary data then um, looks at existing data so you search books or the internet f um, for the data that matches what you're trying to um, find out about and it's as simple as that. So think about the credibility of the source that you're using and please, please, please do not use Wikipedia. That is not credible. Okay, you might want to use that as a starting point to get some ideas, but please do not use that in your referencing. Primary data, um, so the easiest way we've found is using Google Forms. So log into the Google Forms website as found there or do a simple Google search. Then you click on personal and this is what you'll see then you select the blank form up here in the top um, left to create your own um, form 
and this is what we'll sort of come up with. So you'll have this um, area up here, so you create the title of your survey. Um, what did you like about your design? You might want to put a few different options there, so you can have multiple choice, you can have short response, there's a whole heap of different things. You might even want to do a scale. And um, you click on the different types of questions by dropping that drop down box. Make sure you have a mixture of the types of questions from closed to open style questions so that you can draw more information out of the person responding. And then, yeah. The next thing when you're gathering the data, once you, the, your survey is complete, um, with the Somerset accounts, you need to make sure that you click on the little cog in the top right. So before you send your survey, click on the cog up in the top right here, and then you need to dis deselect this um, restrict to your users in Somerset and trusted domains. That will allow anyone to fill in your survey. Okay, so just click on that and then that should allow others to fill it in. Gathering data. So then the next bit is then you can click on the send button. Once you've created your 10 questions in your survey, um, this will either create a, a link or you can email directly to the people that you want to respond. Um, I usually use the link and then shorten the URL just so that I've got that out there. Um, you need to have at least three people answer your survey. Okay. Try working in teams um, to answer each other's surveys questions. And then once you're finished as well, you can go back here and then there's the responses option up here that will allow you to sort of look at the different responses and you need to uh, paste those images into your Word document. Secondary data hack. So when you're sort of trying to get your data together, if you're really stuck for trying information, you can always just type into Google your original research question. So remember those five research questions that you created and focus on some credible sources of data. So what makes a good cable protector? You might want to have a look through those different websites. So some other hints when you're doing the research, um, get the target audience. So what are important things you need to know about your target audience to make a successful cable protector for them? So the age range, the gender, the interests, um, what type of sport they're interested in. There's a whole heap of different things. The themes. So what themes um, coincide with the situation that are easily identifiable? And what images coincide with the themes that are easily identifiable? So what are the prominent commercial brands that appeal to the relevant target audience? So you might want to do Star Wars. Uh, that's just my personal thing. You might then want to um, explore what are the issues that occur when you 3D print. So the size of the design, how many components connect to each other, um, the quality of the plastic used. There's a whole heap of different things that you might want to sort of look into when you're researching. Um, this is a simple template that you might want to use. So you would have your original uh, research question at the top here. And then you might have the primary and secondary sources of data that you've sort of collected um, here with your answers, giving a brief overview of what you found in each. Then you might want to put the sources in there. Um, some existing cable protectors, when you're looking them up, you might want to think, consider the description. So what does an overview of the protector look like? The colors, so the schemes, are they appropriate? The shapes, so do they use simple shapes, do they use complex shapes? Um, will they be hard to reproduce the different shapes that you've sort of put together? The functionality um, is the protector the right size? Will the protector hold the um, cable appropriately? Is there anything unique about it? There's a whole heap of different things. Then you might want to list the pros and cons, the benefits and disadvantages of the protector that you sort of put together. Okay. Finally, then you want to do the design brief. So as the designer for the company that you've worked for, um, I need to design and create, give you a description of the cable protector with the different themes, the focus, and how does it resolve the situation that you um, set out in strand one. Um, this is a template that you might want to use for when you um, fill in the blanks for each of the designs that you're looking at. So that can help you get the images, the colors, the simple shapes, the complex shapes, what features are going to be hard to reproduce, uh, the functionality issues, um, and then the pros and cons, and then a summary of the um, particular image. Some other hints. So when you're researching online, um, find sources that support the idea that cable uh, protectors are popular products that can be sold. So um, explain a few reasons in your research and make sure you're using Harvard reference be specific about who your target audience is going to be. Um, think of five questions that you might need to develop your cable protector. For example, what colors and themes you might your target audience prefer. 
primary research, like we said, is creating a simple survey or interviewing your target audience. Secondary research is the information that you find from websites, articles, books, etc. Um, when gathering primary data, use Google Forms or a Word document to collect the doc information, although I would recommend Google Forms. Uh, when you analyze four sim similar uh, cable protectors, simply analyze cable protectors that um, if you can't find ones that match your cable protector. So if, for example, you're trying to do a shark cable protector, you can't find any similar tutorials, you might want to look up dolphin tutorials and there might be something that is out there. Um, for the design brief, imagine if you're talking to a client and how you're going to develop the design brief um, for the designer or the developer to work on the next stage in the design cycle. Include a summary of the situation, the target audience, what the cable protector should do, and what are they trying to accomplish. You might want to then get some timelines, some due dates, um, constraints and limitations, and also some of the other features. Okay. Make sure when you choose a design that it's something that you're able to do, because once you've set that in motion, we can't really change it. Okay. So when you make the decision in design brief with the, the particular cable protector you want to build, be very careful in the ones that you select. Okay. So to come back to the templates, make sure that this is what you follow. So to summarize, you do the investigation, which is the design situation that you're intending to do for strain one, which is the problem, then the solution that you're intending to do, some background information about why you're trying to do it. Strain two then is a research plan with the research questions for priority levels and why they're important. Um, you then answer the research questions, listing both the primary and secondary sources of information, and then answer them using the data that you've collected. You then analyze a group of similar products that inspire the solution to the problem. You then develop a design brief which presents the analysis of the re relevant research, and then you've got your bibliography at the end. Okay, so thank you very much. If you have any more questions about your criterion A, please send an email or see me in class. Thank you.